Welcome back to the Tigers Den Podcast. Guys, before we get started, you know what we got to do. Smash that thumbs up button. And subscribe if you're brand new. And don't forget, hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Big C Got Game. Whew. GSU almost choked that one away. 35-28 to 28 was your final. Our Tigers did just enough to walk away with the win, giving up 21 points in the second half. Chris King had another solid day at quarterback, 22 of 30 for 237, two touchdowns and one interception. But this is the week that junior Phil Austin returns from injury. It's going to be interesting to see how Coach Hobbs handles the situation. In the backfield, JT had another 100-yard game, carrying the rock 28 times for 152 yards and two scores. But for some reason, late in the fourth, Ladarius Ellis Jones was in the game, and it almost cost GSU. But Jones did finish with 55 yards and a score. Look, look for the Tigers to get Jordan Paxton more involved in the run game with sweeps and even coming out of the backfield. Out wide, King did an amazing job getting his big play wide receivers involved this week. Bradford, Gunn, and Terrell each had five grabs, and C. Tizzle caught his first two touchdowns of the season. On defense, the G-Men got bent to the max, but they didn't break. Josh Carey led the way with 11 tackles, and big Cam Richardson and Rich Maynard both had sacks. The one thing I've noticed during this game, the pass rush really did not make LSU nervous. We have to do a better job at getting off our blocks and getting after the QB. Digging deeper into the stats, GSU dominated across the board, but the two turnovers kept LSU in the game. The secondary held LSU to only 100 yards passing, but the D did give up 138 yards on the ground. So taking a look at your top 25 for the week, and we have some movement. Nebraska still in at number one, but North Carolina jumps up to number two with their win over Vitek in overtime. USC falls to three. Oklahoma up three spots to four. Cal down a spot to five. Ohio State holding strong at six. Bama is up three spots to seven. Penn State is up three spots to eight. Vitek down four spots to nine. And Minnesota up five spots to 10. Where's our Tigers? Well, they're slowly creeping back up the board now at 19. For the first time this year, here's a look at the Heisman race and look who's making some noise to the voters. Redshirt freshman Joel Thomas. Now, do I think he'll win the Heisman this year? No, but it's cool to see him making some noise and getting some recognition. To the recruiting trail we go and it was a huge week for our Tigers. We welcome D.N. Caleb Causey to the G-Men defense. The four-star Maryland native is a stud. He brings a unique combination of speed and strength to an already stout defensive line. And then the offensive line just got better. Three-star tackle Marcus Berry has signed with Grambling State. The 6'5", 300-pounder comes in with a strong run block trait and could start at right tackle next season. So we go to the top of the board. Kenneth Johnson moves to our number one spot, but Tulane has jumped over GSU on his list, and he still has visits to Houston and Auburn coming up. If we could keep the competition into the offseason, we might have a chance. Linebacker Brandon Ginn still has GSU as his number one team. We are making a big push to land this tackling machine. Last week at his homecoming game, he had 15 tackles, three sacks, and an interception. He plays all over the field. Four-star D tackle Lionel Smith has made a three-team race. GSU, Mizzou, and Nebraska. He has visits coming up with Mizzou and Nebraska in the last couple weeks of the season. The race is tight for four-star safety Jason Dukes. GSU has a slight lead over Vitek and New Mexico State. DN Michael Anderson has made it a two-team race, and it's tight. Grandma State has a small lead over Kentucky. He could be moved inside to be more of a three-technique D-tackle. Guard Reggie Jenkins has moved Grambling State to his number one team. He has above-average blocking traits. Given some time, he could be a dominant offensive lineman. Five-star wideout Bobby Smith is taking his time with his decision. Grambling State's lead is growing over Buffalo and UConn. More points have been added to his recruitment to hopefully land this star wideout. Joseph Clayton is all in with Grambling State. The athlete turned D lineman is just weeks away from making his commitment announcement. Five-star athlete Kevin Easley has narrowed it down to three teams. GSU is leading, followed by USC and Oklahoma. He could give the G-men their first two-way player. 
Five-star quarterback Matt Jones has now moved Grambling State to his number one team. His athleticism excites coaches, but his accuracy is a concern. And finally, three-star speedster Charles Jackson has a tight race going. Wisconsin's in the lead, but Grambling State and Memphis aren't too far behind. Right now, GSU has the 11th-ranked class with seven signings. Stay up to date with our recruiting and everything Grambling State by following your boy on Twitter, IG, and Facebook at Big C Got Game. Well, it's time to get ready for our Week 10 matchup with the 6-2 and two Ole Miss Rebels. The Rebels have wins over Mizzou, Tennessee, Vandy, Arkansas State, Bowling Green, and Arkansas, but have lost to Bama and Auburn. Ole Miss is led by quarterback Alex Fano. He's thrown for 1,146 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. But yet again, we have to worry about the scrambling ability. His backfield mate is freshman Brandon Matthews. He's dangerous. He's carried the rock 141 times for 730 yards and 7 scores. Fano is second on the team with 509 yards and 6 scores. Out wide, they have another dangerous weapon, Trey Nixon. He leads the team in catches and yards. But tight end Dawson Knox leads the team with 6 receiving touchdowns. The key this week will be shutting down the run and forcing Fano to beat us with his arm. But this Ole Miss defense is fast and brings tons of pressure. Outside linebacker Mike Allen leads the team with 42 tackles. Right outside linebacker Jerry and Street has unreal speed and can get after the QB. Ryan Anderson leads the team with sacks with four and a half, and his line mate Charles Wiley has three and a half sacks. In the secondary, Jalen Jones leads the team with four interceptions, and safety Armani Linton has three. This is going to be an interesting matchup for our old line. It's going to be important for King or Austin to get the ball out early and fast. Before we get out of here, let's take a look at our season stats. At quarterback this year, we've had all three get playing time, but Chris King has shined as a freshman throwing for 1,137 yards and nine touchdowns. In the backfield, Joe Thomas has been a surprise this year, carrying the Rock 137 times for 851 yards and 15 touchdowns. Before he went down with the season-ending injury, Charlie Brooks had 58 carries for 353 yards and four scores. Out wide, freshman Sean Edwards leads the team in catches, yards, and touchdowns. Numbers are down across the board for our receivers and tight ends because of the inconsistent play from our quarterbacks. On defense, Josh Carey is all over the field. Through seven games, he has 104 tackles and seven sacks. Sophomore Richard Maynard has his second double-digit sack season. Big Cam Richardson has eight, and Marvin Goff has four. We haven't forced that many interceptions this year. Fred Paris and Jermaine McConnell each have two. Bennett, Fawarda, Collins, and Carey each have one. Now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Phil Austin is back this week. My concern is throwing him into action after the injury. Chris King has done a great job filling in, but we got to close out the season strong, and I think we need to lean on the junior All-American quarterback. And it looks like Herbie is rolling with the Tigers this week. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're brand new. It's homecoming week, so you already know it's going to be a party. Hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Twitter, IG, and Facebook at Big C Got Game. And I'll see you guys at the hole. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace.